Having a way to save data is important to any game, no matter if you want to remember the player's health, what level the player is on, or something more complex like saving the player's inventory, which I will be making a video on really soon. But this is the sample that we will be creating in this tutorial. We can change these variables here, which are just simple variables with buttons that we can change the number of, we can save this data, and when we change up these numbers, we can load that data back or we can save this data. But if we load the data back, we're going to go back to what we, we had. This even works when we close out of the game. So let's say that we want eight, six and five or four. So or five, it, does, it doesn't really matter. So six, eight and five. We save this data, we'll load it and you see it changes and or it keeps it the same. But if we change up the numbers a little bit, we can load the data and it's going to keep it at this. But if we close out of the game and then we close out of go dot completely, then we go back down here and open up this project again, then hit F6 to replay the game. You're going to see that we can change these numbers to whatever we want. But if we click load data, we're going to have the numbers that we saved a moment ago. So this is going to store this data outside of Goda. I will explain to you step by step how and why everything works. So you will be able to go and create your own save and load system in your own game from the knowledge you learned from this video. If you could subscribe and drop a like on this video so YouTube can push this to more aspiring game developers, then it would mean the world to me. But let's get started. Right now we have a pretty simple game. We have a save data function and a load data function that do absolutely nothing. We have different numbers that change different variables on the screen and we obviously we can't really do anything because nothing works right in our script our save button does nothing and our load button also does nothing we have three variables at the very top and we have three rich text labels that are updated constantly through the process function based on what those variables are those variables are changed by our two buttons a minus button and a plus button that just changes the variable very simply same with the variable two and same with variable three in this tutorial we're going to go over how to create the save button and how to create the load button so that we can have everything come together and we can use these save buttons and this load button to change data and work data and save data and load data. So to get started with saving data in our Godot projects, we need to create a save path. We'll go to our script and we'll say var save underscore path equals whatever you want to save it toward. I'll save it in the user. I'll name this save file variable with dot save at the end. Now with the save path, we will create a new file that will save this data outside of Godot in the project's data folder. So we'll create a new function called save and we need to open the file on our save path and change variables inside. So to do that, we'll say var file equals file access dot open save path file access dot write. This is gonna allow us to change variables inside of the file. Then we need to select the data that we wanna save by doing file dot store var and whatever variable name you have for every single variable you wanna store in this file. So we'll do variable one, variable two, and variable three. This allows us to create a new file that will store outside of Godot whatever variables we tell it to. Then we will be able to access and change these variables as things change in the game, which I'm about to explain in a little more depth toward the end of this video. So now we need a way to load the data we save. So we will create a new function and check if the file with the save path name exists. So we'll name this function load data. If file access dot file underscore exist, save path and if that comes back true then we're going to want to open the file named save path we do this by saying var file equals file access dot open save path file access dot read now we want to handpick the variables we saved earlier out of the file we just accessed so in our script we'll change variable one to equal file dot get var variable one we'll change variable two to equal file dot get var variable two and we'll do the same thing for three but when we check to see if the file exists and it comes back false or if it comes back false, we need a way to show that no data has been saved in that file. So we'll do this by putting an else statement to the original if statement, and we'll print no data saved, and we'll reset all the variables to zero. Now we are able to access the file with our saved data and load it into its corresponding variable names that will update the rich text labels in our process function. Now we need to run the save function and load data function when their respective buttons have been pressed. So when our save button's pressed, we'll call the save function. And when our load button's pressed, we'll call the load data function. Now theoretically, we should be able to run this game and everything will work. So let's play our game. We see we'll change the variables a little bit around and we will, you know, save the data, change them up a little bit, and we will load the data and we can see that everything works. Now, obviously, if we close out a go dot, we reopen it. We can see that if we load the data, everything works just fine. So that is how you create a save system in Goda. Now let's say you wanna use this as a basic stat system to hold data, right? You wanna have the player's health at eight, you wanna have the in-game time at five, and you wanna have the selected inventory slot at three. Well, you would have to know that, you would save this data, and the next time you come into the game and you load it up, you'll see that you'll know the player's health is at eight, you'll know that the inventory, or the game time is at five, and you know that the inventory slot is number three. How would you use this to store different inventory slots? We'll say 
two variables are going to be assigned to each inventory slot. This is going to be the ID of the item in the slot. So let's say the ID of three equals an apple. That's the ID, the object's ID. And then how many apples are we going to have in the slot? We'll say there is eight apples in the slot. And what slot number is the apple in? Well, this is probably going to be known because variable one is going to be slot one ID number and then slot one item number, right? And then we'll save the data. Next time we come into the game and it loads up and we click the load button, we'll remember, okay, slot one has three and eight. So then we'll know, okay, we need to have apples and we have eight apples in that inventory slot. I'm currently working on an inventory system right now that I will release very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you have any questions at all, then please let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.